keep in mind when I re when I you know source bulk deal sites with the intention of reselling, it is usually to resell back on Amazon. Okay, usually not all the time, but probably about ninety five percent of the time. Okay, because in that aspect, I can literally look at that specific product, and today, like I said, is going to be Adidas shoes, and I can check the listing on Amazon to make sure that I know what it's selling for. Right, if I can buy something for fifteen dollars on a bulk deal site, and I've literally looked at the listing on Amazon, and it sells for you know seventy dollars, and the competition on that listing isn't that bad, right? And there's not that many other sellers on it, and the sales velocity is good, and I can sell it, and we've gone through the checklist, but today is an example of when I buy them back uh, or I buy them on a bulk deal site with the intention of not reselling back on Amazon, which I do from time to time. And I'll resell back on Poshmark, Mercari and eBay. If I find something that I know, or I have a good idea and sense of that I can buy super cheap, but I might be gated for it. If this specifically is Adidas, so I'm gated for Adidas on Amazon. I can't resell Adidas yet on Amazon, but I do still think it's a great opportunity to buy something super low that's a great, great brand and resell it back on other sites and make a markup, okay? So as I'm scrolling through deal news, nothing special, right? I'm literally scrolling down. I'm looking at all the potential deals. I checked this one out because another little caveat too is sometimes, sometimes you can buy an Amazon listing that has like a coupon code or an Amazon listing that, you know, is, is super cheap because it's marked down for whatever reason right now because maybe they're trying to increase the sales velocity or drop the bestseller rank or whatever it is and then literally buy it for cheap on Amazon. And then by the time you ship it back into FBA, if you wait like a week or two, the, mar the, the price will be back up to normal, right? So one of the ways you can kind of look into that, and that's not what I wanted to talk about today, but I'm just trying to give you different ideas and give you a little bit more value in here is by checking out the Keepa graph, right? So for example, this is retailing at 30 bucks, but usually it's about 70 bucks. So if for whatever reason we saw a trend here on Keepa, so if we saw a trend here that like the price was like super, super high, and then all of a sudden, like in the last day or two, it dropped down to 30, but usually it was at like 69 or 70 or, or 65, it might be a potential candidate for, you know, buying off Amazon super cheap right now because the listing's low and then literally shipping it back into FBA a little bit, you know, maybe like a week or two later and reselling it back up at that same retail. There's a number of reasons why that could happen. Sometimes the seller, like I said, is trying to increase the sales velocity or drop the best seller rank so that their listing is obviously a little bit higher in organic, uh, you know, reach on Amazon, right? So if somebody's searching for like, you know, lifestyle business backpack, for example, maybe this one pops up as like the third slot instead of like the 10th, right? That could be a reason. Another reason like on this listing is Amazon's out of stock, which a little bit of a, you know, lesson on keepographs right here. Amazon is the uh, the orange right here, right? So every single time there's a gap in the orange, you see Amazon sets the price at $29.99, right? But every time there's a gap, the other sellers have the buy box right here at about 65. And same thing with this one. Amazon's out of stock. Buy box goes back to the other sellers. So that's a trend. So Amazon, it does look like, because the span of this right here where this is happening is literally right now. So we're, it's about February 18th. It's not about. It's actually February 18th today. Um, all the way back, and this, this trend starts in December, okay? Literally, what, two months ago? So it, they have a history of being out of stock, but I just wanted to kind of touch on that to give you an example because on a lot of the bulk deal sites, you will actually see, see deal opportunities like that. So and maybe another example. Let's just check this out. If we go to this one, right now the buy box is 876 and Amazon has the buy box, right? So what does the keepograph say? Is there an opportunity to, to buy this cheap because usually it retails a lot higher? And the answer is probably... No, because look, all the way back in January, it was still down at 10 at 11 bucks, roughly. Right here, it's 12. So there isn't really, it's not like there's a big drop off the cliff recently to potentially do that, okay? I wouldn't recommend that doing that if you're a beginner. I don't do it often, but if I see a great opportunity to do it, I do do it, and I've actually done it with batteries before. That's why I saw that as a good example, okay? But as I'm scrolling down, I literally saw these Adidas Men's VS Advantage clean shoes retailing at 60 bucks usually on Adidas's website, and you can get them at $18. Great opportunity, in my opinion, to buy branded Adidas shoes off of the Adidas website 
and then literally resell them back on other sites because I can't resell them back on Amazon. Maybe you can, but the majority of you probably can't because Adidas is a is a gated brand and you need to either get approval from Adidas, you either need to have a, liter, a legitimate distributor that gives you a, an invoice of 10 plus quantity of Adidas, which also is very, very difficult to find if they even exist, right? So you need authorization from Adidas, a legit distributor with an invoice of 10 plus, or you need maximum approval to actually be able to sell Adidas uh, on Amazon, okay? I'm not there yet. A lot of you probably won't be there yet. That said, you can still buy these shoes for $18, and then that's a mark off of 42 bucks. Resell them back for retail value on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari for you know X amount of profit. So that's an example that I wanted to touch on. Now keep in mind too that with a lot of these sites, like this is literally going to take you to Adidas.com. So if we hit the buy now right here. What you need to understand is a lot of these you need to actually be a member of. So I need to sign up for Adidas, the, the Adidas website, to actually get a lot of these deals, right? Look, if you sign up, then you get 40% off. But if you don't sign up, you get 30% off. So if you're buying five of these, or even three of these, right, or 10 of these, that extra 10% is going to be a decent amount profit margin that you don't want to forfeit. And same goes with any of these branded websites. There's, I mean, there's literally thousands of them, right? But like, perfect example was like, uh, Macy's, I did it recently. Um, Eddie Bauer, I did it recently. Columbia, I did it recently with like zip up windbreakers. So literally any of the branded websites, what I recommend that you do is you pick an email address, right? Doesn't have to be your email address right now. Set up an entire other email address, right? So X email address at, at Gmail. And then what you want to do is every single time you're sourcing the bulk deal sites and you see a potential opportunity like this, sign up for their for their website or their newsletter or whatever okay there's two there's a reason that you want to do that a make it the same email address so that same x at gmail signs up for all those brands right and that way you literally don't have to check that ever so it's not going to like be blowing up your phone and annoying you all the time with like a thousand brands all emailing you their newsletter but what you can do is first and foremost you're always going to be able to log in on those websites to literally get the deals and the promotions and the coupon codes that they're offering that's one and most important. Number two is they're always to that email going to send you great opportunities or coupon codes or sales that they're running. So I don't recommend that you check it all the time to see it, what these sales are and then source that way. But what I do recommend that you do to save time is just have that, it's literally a file folder, right? That email ends up being a file folder of all those coupon codes and all those sale opportunities so you can reverse engineer it, right? For example, if I'm on Adidas right now, and I'm literally going through this and using this coupon code. Obviously, I already have a coupon code going, so I can't use another one. But let's hypothetically say they are running like a, a Valentine's Day sale, right? And it was like marked off like 40% just because they're running a Valentine's Day sale. What I would do is I would reverse engineer it and I would think, okay, I'm about to buy this shoe for 40% off. It's a great opportunity. But wait, I actually signed up for the Adidas website and the Adidas newsletter X months ago, why don't I go back to x at gmail.com, check my inbox to see if Adidas has sent me any coupon codes or any additional sales in the past month, right, that I potentially can use. And quite often they actually do because they're always sending promotions, brands are always trying to stay in front of their customers, and they're always running sales like that. So it's a great way to essentially collect all those potential uh, extra profit margins through coupon codes or sales and literally go back when you're about to buy and be like, okay, is there an extra one I can add here to increase my profit margin? So that's just what I recommend that you do. Now, even if we didn't do that right off the bat, this is a great opportunity because these are Adidas, which obviously top brands sell very, very well on Poshmark. They sell very, very well on Mercari and they sell very, very, very well on, uh, on eBay as well. So while I can't sell this back on Amazon, there's a great opportunity to make a good margin on this because I can get this for $18. If I sign up for the for the website, right? If I use the coupon code, which is an Addy, Addy Extra right here, and then boom, I also get free shipping. So I'm getting $18 shoes, which I can resell back on Poshmark, eBay, or Mercari for a retail roughly of 60 bucks. Adidas is setting the market at 60 bucks. So even if I drop it to like 55 bucks, right? And I offer free shipping or something like that, I'm giving the better deal, right? Customers are smart and they're gonna potentially find mine because a lot of customers will literally search for these and then they'll be like, okay, I see them for 60 bucks. 
on on adidas.com let me google them and see if anything else pops up with somebody's listing them as cheaper and google is literally going to spoon feed them my listing on poshmark or my listing on ebay or my listing on mercari and boom i make the sale not adidas.com and i make the markup in profit simply because i bought them with this coupon code at the right time listed them for retail value and then sold them later literally later okay so you need patience and you also need kind of anecdotal experience because a lot of people ask me how can you do you know how can you search for sales velocity on Poshmark and Mercari or what sells better on Poshmark and Mercari so on Poshmark and Mercari you can do a little bit of product research but really the best way is just to start right bet on yourself buy a few things even if they're not $18 that you're spending spend some liquidation right you can get liquidation super cheap for like two dollars a unit or like 50 cents a unit or like three dollars a unit right i literally just bought like i spent like 500 bucks on two pallets of of shoes on liquidation and i think they were five bucks a unit but they're all top brands so you can get super cheap inventory from liquidation as well bet on yourself start listing on these platforms and you will start to learn what works and what doesn't a little bit better eventually they will all sell for the most part if you're buying good inventory but you do need to be patient you will learn more as you go okay another way is if you're just listing them on ebay you can go on ebay and check sold and completed on the left side so if we go to ebay and we literally type in vs advantage let's go back and find so VS Advantage Clean Shoes, and we're going to type in Adidas. I'm literally going to type it into the search bar, Adidas VS Advantage Clean Shoes, and see what pops up. Now, I'm not interested in what these are, right? I want to literally go down, and I want to hit Sold and Completed on the left. So Sold and Completed, it's going to click both of them, and it's going to filter through them. Now, what I want to do, and I'm not going to specifically go through and analyze it right here with you because it's pretty self-explanatory. You want to do that so you see exactly what's sold and what completed listings have actually been pushed on the platform recently, right? You want to look at the recency of those listings because if a lot of them sold, but they sold two years ago, probably not that relevant, right? So you want to look at the sold and completed listings for that shoe. If that shoe isn't actually on there, right, then you just want to look at Adidas branded shoes that are very, very similar. Or if it's like a cashback product, you want to look at very, very similar items to give you an idea of the demand of that potential item on that marketplace, okay? Then you also want to look at you also so one, let's say you find out that this is a good product both you know price wise and you know potential profit margin wise right i guess they're the same thing but i'm i have a lot of ideas in my mind i'm trying to relay to you so then you want to go back and unclick this sold and completed and research it because now you already know that the through sold and completed it's a good opportunity but you also want to make sure that there's not a lot of competition still currently on the ebay platform right because if you have while if a lot of them have sold for 60 but now the market is flooded and there's like a hundred other sellers all listing that same item and they're all listing at 30 bucks then your opportunity and profit margin on ebay specifically is not is no longer retail at 60 then it's probably close to the 30 because there's a lot of other sellers setting the market on ebay at 30 dollars okay so a lot of moving parts there rewind it and slow it down and watch it again if you need to understand that but that is literally how you do product research on ebay that's how i do it that's how all the top ebayers do it there's no other better way than basically doing that look at the sold and completed see if it's good opportunity and then look at the current uh, market on there and the other competition that is also selling that and what prices they're at okay so that's ebay but to give you an example if i resold this back on poshmark and this is exactly what i plan to do on poshmark ebay and mercari if i sold this at 60 right there's a potential profit margin of 48 dollars on poshmark so if i sell it at retail value i can potentially make 48 bucks i'm buying it for 18 dollars. so then that ends up being a profit margin of 30 dollars per shoe now let's say let's say that i always recommend selling it listing it higher and then generating interest but so what i would do is i'd list this relatively high i'd probably list it at 75 i wouldn't expect to make the sale at 75 if i did make the sale at 75 great but more importantly i would probably make the sale closer to like 60 or 50 because i would list it high accumulate interest and then simulate urgency and value by making offers to the people that were interested but to go back to the retail value, let's say I sold this at 60 on Poshmark. I would make 30 bucks because you take 18 off 48. Let's say I even dropped the price to 55. I would end up making 44 and then I still made 24 bucks. Let's say I really gave a bargain at 49 eventually and made an offer. I would still make 39.20, which if you take 18 off, that ends up being $11.20. So there's a great opportunity, which is over a 11 on, on 18 is over 50% ROI. 
So great opportunity right here to buy these low, resell them higher, but there's a lot of moving parts here. You have to sign up for the newsletter or the website on all the brands. I've already covered how to do that and why you want to do that. Then look for opportunities to either resell these back on, on Amazon specifically, which is what I usually like to do, or buy them super cheap at the right time, list them and wait, be a little bit patient. Maybe they sell in a couple weeks, maybe they sell in a week, or maybe they sell in two months, but then I make my markup and I'm literally multiplying my money. I'm taking my $18 and I'm turning it into, you know, 35, right? And I do that 10 times. Boom. That's online arbitrage. That's reselling 101. Buy low, list high. It's super, super simple. So that is, you know, a tutorial on how to use deal news.